الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أهبت في الله we left off in the treaties the methodology of the Salaf al and the Ummah's need for it where Imam Fozan Hafid Allah Ta'ala was referring to the importance of seeking guidance with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this is to keep you away from kufr, shirk, bid'ah, nifaq uh, and all the various the forms of hizbiyah and deviance and to keep yourself grounded on the sabil of the Salaf al May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us with tawfiq in that Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen So he said we should continually ask Allah to allow us to traverse this path and to remain firm upon it. This is mandatory, obligatory, because this is in the, the Quran. This is Umm al Kitab. This is the mother, mother of, of the book, Surah Al Fatiha. The fear is not that we merely ascribe to this methodology and claim to follow it. A claim void of proof is invalid. The fear is not that we merely ascribe. This is because Allah stated, وَالَّذِينَ اَتَّبُهُمْ بِأَحْسَانِ And also those who follow them exactly in faith. So it wasn't sufficient that the early generations followed the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين and it wasn't sufficient that the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى just in and of themselves just practice any way they had to ascribe and practice in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this is what true Hidayah is and this is going beyond just a, a claim because many people look at how popular in some circles it has become to call one to ascribe to the Salaf now it's become trendy before it was a big aib it was a big Many, you know, people didn't like it and they felt, you know, uh, you know, they have names like Wahhabism and all kind of things, Wahhabi and blah, 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 and all these different uh, terminologies, you know, extremists, this and that and the other. But now it becomes trendy to call yourself Salafi and to follow the Salaf. And look at how many Tekfiris and how many Hizbis and how many peop other groups claim Salafiyyah. But they're fa'id, ba'id on Salafiyyah. They're far from Salafiyyah. And Salafiyyah bari'un minhum. That uh, uh, Salafiyyah is far from them and their claims, their false claims. And as we mentioned before, the one of the principles in the religion, al-ibra bi haqaiq, laysa bi musamiyat. That the proof of something is in its reality, or you know, in its substance, not in the claim, not in the name. So, for example, if I say that I am, if I call myself a, say, hey, I'm, I'm a card-carrying member of the Ku Klux Klan, for example. For those who don't know who the Ku Klux Klan are, they're one of the first... Uh, uh, American terrorist organizations that uh, terrorized predominantly African Americans and, and other minorities and lynched many uh, black people and killed them and slaughtered them uh, among the other and, and uh, terrorized them. So if I say that I am one of them, I don't think they would accept me. And no matter how much I tried and strove to be a part of their way of thinking and to do what they do. I will never fit their description. I will never be white and I will never fit their criterion. I will never have the true substance, even if I claim, even if my name is different. Likewise, if we take a, this rock, okay, and I say this is not a rock. Rather, this is a bar of gold. 
and I want you to buy this for $50 million because I could use it. I could use it for Dawa. I could use it for opening uh, centers of Elm. I could use it to help my children. I could use it for many things, many things of khair. But I don't think you would accept that this is other than a rock, nor would you be willing to pay for it. Even if I called it gold, if I called it silver, if I called it the most precious jewels, if I called it anything which the people love and respect, it will not change the fact that this is a rock and people will not be concerned with obtaining it because, I, because the substance is the same regardless even if the name has changed with regards to it or I have a claim to it. Likewise, someone, no matter how much they claim Salafiyah, but yet they are excessive in takfir and abusing the principles of takfir. Rather, they're takfiri, not Salafi. And no matter how much one claims to be Salafi, but they are on Hezbiya, calling to them and their group and their, their, their clique, and they're making, calling everyone else an innovator, that who's not down with them, that doesn't make them Salafi. And no matter how much someone has a gang mentality and they claim that they're Salafi, that doesn't make, their Salaf, make them Salafi. And likewise, the one who is so easy and throws away all the principles in the deen or many important kawaid in the deen and they claim, no, I'm Salafi. I'm following the Salaf. But this is permissible. We will uh, full onslaught into... Um, uh, to, 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 to deviant principles that negate the method of the Salaf and they're going full board on that. No matter how much they claim that they're Salafi, the Ibra bi haqaiq lisa bi musamiyat, the proof is in what they're practicing and in their understanding in their madhab, their methodology, not in what they claim. The Shaykh then said, meaning about the ayat, وَالَّذِينَ اَتَّبَعُهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ and those, also those who follow them, exactly in faith he said meaning they followed them with perfection and one cannot perfect the way of the Salaf except with knowledge of their meth methodology one cannot hold firm to it except that he is patient upon it one must not listen to the false deviant claims which seek to divert you from the path indeed this is the correct path the path of salvation all of the other paths will lead you to the hellfire except one the companions Allah asked which path is saved O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he replied, those who are upon what I am on and my companions are upon today. Or those who are upon what I and my companions are upon today. This is the way of the Salaf. And this is the way of salvation, which will lead to paradise. There is no other path, and every other path is astray. So Imam Fozan is, is showing us uh, that... There's only one path. It isn't simply a, simple, uh, uh, simply a matter of a claim to adhere to that path. But all of us have to scrutinize our actions and our, our practice and our uh, manners and everything on the scale of Salafiyya. But, but, and not, not Salafiyya in accordance with our actions. And what I mean by this, let me give you a, a good example. This has been a very dangerous thing and it's still practiced today that especially many of the people who have not studied, uh, you know, and just have to blind follow and deal with only translations and they have a, an, a different understanding of the Dawa that they say, oh, the truth is with Sheikh so-and-so or the truth is with these brothers only. Uh, billah, no one, has the, the ownership to the truth. Meaning that as a prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kulu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khattayina tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes, they sin. But the best of those is those who repent. All of us make mistakes. And what's interesting, one of the great imams of this day, half of the law ta'ala, a great imam of the sunnah who's known for being shadeed on Ahl al-Bid'ah, speaking about them and making their affairs clear for us. Imam uh, Rabi bin Hadi 
being Hadi al Medhali, Hafid Allah Ta'ala. And one thing he says, which is one of the principles in the religion, which is taken from statements of the Salaf, is that Al Haq, uh, La Yurath, uh, Al Haq, Bi Rijal, Walakin Yurath, Rijal Bil Haq, or Kamaqal is that we don't know the truth by men, but rather we know the men by the truth. Allahu Akbar. When you, and the point I wanted to mention, especially that Sheikh Rabi says it, because there's many people who blindly follow the Sheikh. And there's no way you can deny this. I know countless brothers that I grew up in Islam, grew up on the Sunnah with, we studied in various places. I met how many students of knowledge in Medina and how many in, in, in Yemen and coming from Yemen who blind follow certain scholars in everything. It isn't just that they have trustworthy, but they'll say that as if that is Dalil. We never say that the Sheikh's statement is Dalil, is evidence. His statement has to be looked at the scale of evidence of the Quran and the Sunnah and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'm going to expound on this because this is so important. And this is the last part of the treaties, so we need to go into this deep. And I want you to listen, and I hope that at least two people in this world are guided by this uh, sitting. Because so many people, they blind follow and they take the opposite. How, many, how much fitna do we have in the West and in the East, mind you? In Africa, in Asia, in the Arab Peninsula, in Yemen. Y Yemen is the Arab Peninsula, but all over the world. So much fitna because people turn this Qaeda upside down. They say, Sheikh so and so said this, I'm with him. Fine, if you're blind following the Sheikh in that mas'ala, but you say that as if his goal is evidence. His call, his statement is not evidence. If I tell you my opinion on something, or I advise you, or I take a fatwa of one of our scholars, and it's applied to your situation, or whatever the situation, that does not mean that it is the haq. It means we're striving our best to give you the haq, if our intention is correct. We're striving. So the one who strives, that is from, that's ahlan for this, like the scholars and those strong students of knowledge, that's excluding us, that they'll be rewarded for this, for their ijtihad, because they did the best they could. They'll get re one reward if they're wrong and two if they're right. But that does not mean what they said is the truth, is the only way. La, we can't say that. And in every issue, we can't say Sheikh Rabi said, Sheikh Rabi said, Sheikh Rabi said, uh, Hajuri said, Hajuri said, Hajuri said, Rahili said, Rahili, uh, 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 Fozan said, Bin Baz said, Al Albani said, uh, Imam Muqbil said, Ibn Al Qayyum, Ibn Taymiyyah. We can't say that in every masala. You can't say that about anyone. So we know them. Why do we say Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah? Because of his strict adherence to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sabil of the Salaf. And he, in his books, you don't win. Al, 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 uh, Athar al Salaf and their their and the principles in the Kawaid. You know, his books are filled with statements of the Salaf and reviving and giving us the understanding of those statements and the fiqh and so forth. And you know, his books are full. He's Shaykh al Islam for that reason. Does not mean every mas'ala, every issue he's correct on, every issue you can blind follow him. He is the haq is with him. La, you cannot say that. You have to say that his statements, we look to his statements to see how they're in accordance with the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the Salaf. Because who is he compared to the Sahaba? Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. No. You can't compare him to the Sahaba. There's fadl is afdal bi kathir in Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Their fadl is afdal bi kathir. Their benefit is greater than any in, 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 in any of the mashayikh that we take and we love for it. Their benefit is not like the Sahaba. Their position and status in Islam, nothing like the Sahaba. We love them. We follow them in that which they say, which is in accordance with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah, and the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah. So that's imperative that we understand that. We need to understand that the truth is not known by men, but men are known by the truth. We have to have the scale of the truth. Here's the truth. We look to the men to see if they're, what they're saying and what they're doing is in accordance with that truth. 
but we don't look to the men to say, oh, that is the truth. So this, I hope this is, is clear. Because if we really understood it and practiced it, implemented in our understanding, it would save us from so much fitna. It would save us from so much fitna. And so and being, as uh, Sheikh Suleiman al-Rahili says, a beautiful statement, when he was talking about uh, the way students you know, misguide, mis, misuse some of these principles, abuse some of these principles, and what it ends, and they warn against ulama. This should ring a bell. They warn against many ulama without hujjah and according to blind following a particular sheikh in the mesala, where the sheikh can be correct or it can be incorrect. But instead of looking into the issue, if they have the ability to do so, they don't. Or and then they make issues because of it let's look at it to our situation some of you may not uh, like our Sheikh Sheikh Ibrahim Rahimi and I've received enough flack about it and I will receive flack about it and and really don't care that much but I want to mention this because it, it I'm just as I'm going maybe I had too much coffee today but I, I, I it's coming to me and what I want to mention for example related to this issue some of our mashaykh, like, and he's my sheikh, Sheikh Ubaid Ajabri, Hafizullah Ta'ala, I spent years studying with him as well in Medina, my sheikh. Uh, sheikh Abdullah Bukhari, I, don't, I, I know he has a refutation, or he spoke uh, his, his book about Hajjah, and I've read it. I have the book. But Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, no doubt, is clear about his tabdi and Sheikh, uh, uh, sheikh Ubaid. And Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, I had some limited study with. I didn't really finish uh, much books with him. I attended some of his lectures, tried to visit the Sheikh at his masjid and things like this, but didn't really have much time with Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi in Medina. But those are our scholars, and we love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But just because Mohammed bin Hadi makes tabdi of Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili doesn't mean I have to follow that. I have to look into the issue because now we're talking about the honor of a scholar who's known for who's been known for years of calling the Kitab was Sunnah. So we have to look at Sheikh Muhammad's uh, Hujjah, his proof. Likewise, we have to look at Sheikh Obaid's proof. Likewise, we have to look at those who defend Sheikh Ibrahim, what their proof is. And likewise, we have to look at what Sheikh Ibrahim said to understand so that we know and understand we're on Bayina. So I made my decision to continue to benefit from the sheikh and be open about it based upon that, based upon ilm wa fiqh. Not that I have much, but I have studied enough to where I can see where some of the, some, some mistakes are being said about him and some of his mistakes. I have enough of a little bit of limited knowledge to be able to discern, but if you don't have that at least and you blind follow, that's fine, but don't make tip D of your brothers who disagree with you. Don't let it be an issue of causing great fitna, especially if it's controversial amongst Ahl Sunnah. I'm not talking about Ahl Bidah. I'm not talking about Ma'rabi, for example. Some people defend Ma'rabi, which is, is wrong. I still, I'm not going to make tibdi of him just because, you know, maybe his, 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 his depth of looking into the issue of Ma'rabi isn't there. Whatever the case may be. And that's between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the point being is letting that controversy, let it being an issue of controversy. And then it filters to us, who many people are not even students of knowledge, and then they fight and attack and split because of it. How many Salafi Masajid, I've heard countless stories, I've never been to the UK. Countless, I know so many brothers, people who, uh, I know countless do out there, I know a lot of people from the different camps. The different camps of Ahl Sunnah, I'm talking about brothers who, from the Salafi pubs camp, <coughs> and from the Medina.com, or the, the other camps, some of the other masajid there. These ones are in Croydon, these ones are in Brixton. I don't know, I'm not on the ground. But I only know, I can only look at what I see people calling to. The limited I see, and I've known how many Salafis from Brixton, countless, and Du'at. And how many from Salafi pubs? I've known countless coming from there and, and, and that we've sat in the same durus together studying the book of Allah and the sunnah the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I know countless brothers from there from Yemen up to now or my days in Yemen from 1997 I know brothers we studied with Imam Mukbil and what will I say 
What can I say about this? I will say, going back to that principle, that we have to look, instead of blind following, you have to gain knowledge so you can see the truth from falsehood. And so that way you're not, every time the wind blows this way, you're running with it. Because how many brothers have split and been attacked when once they were brothers, once they were refuting people together, and now they refute each other as if they are enemies. As if they're disbelievers who hate one another. Countless, we can think of countless ex examples. From one year to the next, from in the past few years, I know I can name probably 10 Mashaikh, at least, that are so known for the Sunnah. But other Mashaikh now say no. And it might be the issue of Ibrahim Raheli only, because they disagree about that. And they still do conferences with him. Or it might be this, it might be that. How many? This is the danger of Hezbiya. And especially when you and I get into it and we don't know Arabic. And we don't have the tools to discern haq battle. Just be quiet and study and learn. Bi'idnillah. And then you will stay. And this will keep you grounded on the madhab of the salaf of salah. And away from the deviated paths. Imam Fuzan then mentions the ayat. He says, Allah said, وَلَا تَأْتِبِعُوا سُبُولُ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سِبِيلِهِ عَنْ سِبِيلِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. So, don't get into his bia. Don't divide. Don't attack one another and deviate from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on desires. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ he said, this is the path of Allah, and the other paths are deviated and astray. Upon them are the devils who call the people uh, to deviation. And that's in accordance with the hadith, and we'll uh, take that on our next sitting. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive, for, forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the shaitan was sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.